So this episode, we start off with Sarek sitting in meditation on the planet Vulcan when he opens his eyes and gasps, Michael, because we're bringing out their family connection here. Did you know they're related? <laughs> Did you know that? I had no idea. Oh, uh, okay. Well, now, now we What's gets, their connection exactly? Um, <sighs> uncle and niece or something? <laughs> I'm not really sure. There's a family resemblance of sorts. They both have heads and arms and feet. That's um, true. Yeah. All so, the requisite amounts of them. That's right. As far as we can tell. <laughs> Uh, Captain Pike is contemplating abandoning the ship and blowing it up so that way uh, Control can't get a hold of the sphere data, which is the thing that the Control needs to get a hold of to make it sentient so it can destroy everything. Now, is it not sentient already? Does it need to be more sentient? What am I missing here? You know, I, I, I watching it tonight, I was kind of feeling the same way. I mean, it's an artificial intelligence, so maybe it maybe it only has the appearance of sentience no, right could now. Could be, could be. It's faking it till it makes it. Right. Yeah. I don't know. The crew of the Discovery is evacuating turbo lifts, and uh, Saru is grabbing his sister's knife. Pike kind of sits in his chair, all grim and uh, uh, you know serious looking. A little more Jeffrey Hunter than Anson Mount. Uh, yeah, I know. appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Saru standing at his side as a good first officer should. <laughs> Burham's chilling alone in a science lab, staring at a time crystal emotionally when Pike enters, telling her that the ship is almost clear. <laughs> and it was <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> well, you know, again, Prestige TV, the whole point is to get emotion out of people, right? That's fair. She. Yeah. She did cry a lot in this. You know, too. you know what? I, I got to say, I, I this is going to sound a little sexist. She is pretty when she cries. So, you know, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe they were on to something with all the crying. I don't know. Well, we see what kind of partner you'd be to her. Good uh, job, Jeremy. <laughs> reach over and pinch every now and always again. Trying Go ahead. Her, always <laughs> Go ahead. trying to make her cry. <laughs> this make you want to cry? What if I take your Doritos away? Ha ha. <laughs> She asked uh, Pike why the signal brought them to Boreth for the crystal, and Pike replies they could figure it out while they were walking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you and I talked real quick before we started recording, and you said this one was a lot of buildup. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like, um, I won't say it's no, it's like, I won't say it's no substance, because obviously this stuff is, all All these scenes are building up to part two. But yeah. That kind of actually made for a, kind of boring watch on the rewatch because like i know that the next episode is where all the cool stuff happens yeah exactly and and it, on the rewatch like you're saying when that's in your head you're just kind of like okay come on let's uh <laughs> let's get to this day of the doctor stuff yep, come on <laughs> let's go we, we we got space pirates and stuff out there we need to see <laughs> All right, so Pike and Saru activate the auto-destruct, and the lights turn out as the ship begins to power down. Saru reports that life support, environmental controls, and artificial gravity generators would deactivate within five minutes, and that the entire crew was accounted for. 